So this is how maintenance works on a V-Star. I was just doing my oil change and oil change removes the front exhaust pipe and the front exhaust pipe makes it easy to do the uh, brake fluid flush for the rear brakes. And since I already had the equipment out for the brake fluid flush, I decided it would be a good time to inspect the brake fluid in the front brakes and do a brake fluid flush there as well. So now I'm going to get started on the procedure for flushing the brakes for the front brakes. And this is not entirely different from the rear brakes and I will post a video for that above. It's probably easier only as far as being able to reach everything because it's all up front and center uh, where you can work on it instead of under the bike. The only thing that I guess could be argued is more difficult is the fact that there are two calibers. This is, this is hardly more difficult. It is merely an extra step in the process, but doesn't present really any extra challenge. Most people have some sort of cover like this over their front brake reservoir. This cover sits over the original cover. They don't stand up to the brake fluid. They, they start to fall apart. There's really nothing you can do about it. You can buy another one and it's gonna to start to flake off. It, it is what it is. It's coated aluminum. Um, you get these chrome covers, you put it over, that's all there is to it. Uh, under here is the original cover, we'll see that now. And I take this right off with a 3 mil. I lift off this chrome cover, and we can see the original cover under there. Again, I haven't bothered doing anything with it, I've just covered it up. It seals just fine. And then just because, I'll wrap like an old towel around here, so... In case something spills, the towel will get it before it just drips everywhere. I open up the cover, it comes off with no problem, and there was no leaks of any kind, right? But we could see that the fluid is just starting to turn, just like uh, the rear brake fluid from the last video. So we're going to use the same procedure, we're going to pull it through, we're going to get fresh fluid in there, we're going to seal this up, and we're going to call it a day. I'm going to reiterate from the last video in doing the rear brakes that if you don't have one of these pneumatic brake bleeders, you should go to Harbor Freight and pick one up. They're really cheap. This is how you do brakes properly, right? So you get one of these, you hook them up to your air compressor. It pulls a vacuum into a canister. You open it up with the uh, uh, eight millimeter and you have brake fluid. And this is all you need to do the job. Not a lot of tools. But you need one of these. You can't do it the old way where you, 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 you pump the brakes and then you open it up and close it real quick. Nobody does that anymore. That's like in an emergency to bleed brakes on the side of the road. <laughs> this is not what this is. So get the correct tools for the job. And then come back and watch the video. Rant completed. So I'm going to pull off the protective cap from the caliber. On cars, there's an argument to be made as to which brake you start with. And it's the furthest one from the reservoir. In this scenario, both calipers are equally distant from the reservoir, so it doesn't matter which one you do first, it's irrelevant. So I'm just starting with whichever one I choose. Now I've hung the brake bleeder here just under the throttle, uh, close enough that I'll be able to grab the handle and work with it as I bleed the first caliper. I'll take the eight millimeter spanner and put it over the valve, making sure that I have room to work in both directions to open and close, lay it right there. Then I'll take the rubber fitting from the pneumatic bleeder and lay it over the bleeder valve, making sure that it's securely fit, just like that. I want to get a good shot of the fluid from a before and after. On the last video, I actually took some out and looked at the color. Uh, now I'm just going to put it to the camera here so I can put it up in the top right corner. So I will squeeze this handle, which will actuate the vacuum like that. Turn the valve open, which will pull fluid. This will drain, and then subsequently I will fill it up. I'm gonna be using this caliper, right, as it is the easiest reach to flush the entire system. Uh, the other caliper will be used to flush from the T and the other caliper below, right? So that'll be doing, uh, serving the purpose of just the second leg. But this will be doing the majority of the work for the whole system.
it's not so easy to do with the camera running, but I got it down a couple of sessions, uh, ran through, and now a nice and clean uh, brake fluid is running through the pipe. I've capped it off. I've let my air tank recharge, and now I'm gonna cap this one off. I'm gonna remove this and put the rubber cap back on, make my way to the other caliper. A little nudge, make sure it's good. And there we go. Just give that a quick wipe with a paper towel. There's no, there's no fluid on here, but I just want to be absolutely sure. Everything is nice and dry. Pop the cap back on. This one's done. On to the next one. Same procedure, except a little harder to work, and you can't move the handlebars, or the reservoir will tip and get brake fluid all over the place. So I'll just sneak down here and remove the cap. Drop the spanner on right quick, and then I'll come around with the bottle. Now I've added the pneumatic bleeder, so we're all set up and ready to go. Make sure I top off the oil first. I will turn on the can, repeat the process. I'll take this off now. It's nice and tight. Everything's clean. Drop the rubber cap back on and we're done. Let's go back topside. So the front is a more complicated system than the rear. There is the chance that air is in the system. So what I need to do is very carefully, now I got the towels around here, and very slowly I'm going to squeeze the lever, watch the center hole. Seeing it? And you see the air bubble come up? Watch what I'm doing, I'm squeezing. I'll zoom out so you can see. See the air bubbles? Little dots forming in the middle. You can zoom in on that now. Very slow, I'm squeezing. And I am purging, purging the air. I'll tell you from experience that this, this is good and the level will drop and I'll add more fluid and the brakes will be good, but Really, the only thing that really gets the last bit of air all the way to the top, in my opinion, is a good ride around and then opening up one more time and checking the level and the, the vibration and the movement of the bike and whatnot. It seems, to, it seems to do a good job. Each one of those air bubbles, you know, represents something in the line that's compressible and therefore stops the brakes from working. That's why air in the brakes is such a terrible thing, right? As I remove it, it gets displaced by the brake fluid and the brakes improve, reducing the sponginess. And that's what sponginess is. It's air in the brake lines, right? So it's getting better. I'll give it some time. This piece I end up washing and drying because it's the only good way to inspect it. Uh, looking at mine, I see it's absolutely fine. I'm going to be putting it back on the motorcycle now. Of course, also pay attention to the mating surface before you put it on there. The bubble also gives you a good indication of where you want to be. Uh, we could see that if this bike were to straighten out, this would show a little bit high. But I also know that in time, this is going to drop a little as more of the air comes out. So I now place the rubber gasket back on like so. Everything's been cleaned up. I've also washed this too. You can see there's, there's a, a metal gasket inside here and I've paid attention to make sure that was nice and clean. Went over that with a Q-tip and that's going to make for a good seal. Place this back over. It fits in the grooves of the rubber seal. So that completes the uh, Bleeding of the front brake calipers, uh, naturally everything should be checked and double checked for leaks, that everything is operating correctly, that the brake lever feels good, uh, should be tried out, that the brakes do in fact stop the bike before taking it on the open road. If you feel uncertain about any of the work you've done, by all means take your bike to a professional. Don't take it out on the highway to see if your brakes are operating correctly. I hope you found this front brake brake fluid bleeding procedure to be helpful. Thanks for watching.